The heart has always been seen as a symbol for the soul and the mind. But in reality, it's only a muscle, responsible for pumping life-giving blood through our bodies. Bloodletting is one of the oldest therapies known to medicine. In ancient times, people believed that illness was caused by an imbalance in the four humors, or bodily fluids, and used bloodletting to rid the body of this excess fluid. In the 17th century, bloodletting became a fashionable therapy, good against anything and everything. The doctors used diagrams of the body to determine exactly where to apply their knife or leech. But everything that had been taught about blood in the heart for more than 1,000 years was called into question in 1615 by William Harvey, chief physician to the English king. Harvey drained the blood of living animals to demonstrate a simple equation. It's perfectly clear. If, with every heartbeat, even one single gram of blood leaves the heart, more blood must flow through the heart during one whole day than can possibly be generated anew in the body, as Galen proposed. And for humans, Harvey extrapolates that each day an unbelievable 7,000 liters would have to be produced. In a non-bloody experiment on humans, Harvey proves to his students at the Royal College of Physicians that the blood is not continually produced afresh in the liver. It occurred to me that it might be a large-scale circulation instead. Arteries carry the blood away from the heart. Veins bring it back. The blood flows continually and the heart's only job is to pump the blood through the body. It was not until 1628, 13 years later, that he dared to publish his findings. De Motu Cordis, on the motion of the heart and blood. I trembled, lest I have mankind at large for my enemies, because what I had to say was something no one had ever heard before. Harvey was denounced as the circulator. But as proof of the large-scale circulation, he commissioned these unique wooden panels. He had the entire vascular network removed from corpses, prepared and mounted. Harvey's revolutionary discovery of the heart as motor did not, however, have any consequences for medical practice during his own time. Harvey's discovery did not bring about any immediate therapeutic changes. This was because he himself was convinced that his discovery of the circulation of the blood explained and justified all the standard therapies. It explained how the body worked. It explained why letting blood in one part of the body reduced tension in another. This artistic wax rendering of the circulatory system was made in the 18th century. With a discovery and description of the large-scale circulation of the blood, Harvey managed to shake up the very foundations of medicine. His revolutionary teachings on the motion of blood through the body would finally find wide acceptance in science at the end of the 17th century. Harvey settled forever the question of the relationship of the beats of the heart to pulse. He also gave us the idea of the heart as a sort of machine, as a sort of pump. And he transformed people's view of the body into something that could be described in terms of mechanics or physics or chemistry. Harvey's understanding of the human as machine gave medicine invaluable new impulses. This insight ultimately led to the concept of the artificial heart at the end of the 20th century.